Hey folks, um, for everybody that's watching, I just want to say I appreciate all the uh, subscribers and like. Our channel started about a year and a half ago, and uh, it's really just recently started to kind of take off. Uh, we've more than doubled our subscribers in the past month. One of our subscribers uh, suggested here a little while back that we do an equipment review. So I'm going to do a little bit of that today. Uh, this doesn't really cover our hunting equipment. Um, it's just going to be about our fishing stuff. I, I will say that uh, I'll touch base on what we use and some of the pros and cons of each thing. Some of the stuff I will tell you up front um, is uh, stuff that you need to spend money on and, and really kind of go for broke on it uh, because uh, it's so much better than anything else on the market and some of the stuff is really sort of uh, bargain basement deals on stuff that is really good quality stuff, works, functions, and lasts a long time. I'm not one of these guys to go out and spend five, six hundred dollars on each rod and reel setup. Mostly uh, when you see us fishing, we're fishing for bait to catfish with. Uh, we didn't get to do a lot of uh, overnight catfishing this summer because uh, we were just so busy. Um, uh, both of my sons are in college and uh, my younger son graduated this summer and we had a lot going on with that so on top of our annual catfish tournament so we did a lot of day fishing trips we did do one overnight a lot of what we were doing this summer was just fishing for fun um, and have a good time uh, we did keep a few of the fish we had uh, we got enough fish in the freezer we really haven't kept any since about June right now it's deer season our Bow season in North Carolina has been in for about a month. Muzzle loader started Saturday. Um, I've had a hard time getting to this video because uh, I was helping Dad uh, finishing up belling hay. And we belled uh, last couple weeks about 350 rolls of hay. It's a pretty big job to move it all and to to get it wrapped and uh, and get it set up uh, and stored away for the winter to feed to our cows. So. So the two cameras uh, that we use on the boat are uh, GoPro Hero 9 Blacks. Of course, they're 4K HD. I think they'll even shoot in 5K. So this is a $7 economy clip. Uh, it's great for clipping to a hat. Um, it's a little bit lighter than the uh, GoPro clip. This is seven bucks and you don't have a large range of motion with it. <clears throat> it will, this will spin around this way then it, it kind of gets long and awkward and uh, but for seven bucks if you're filming a turkey hunt or deer hunt and you want to clip that to your hat yeah, it's fine for that this is the gopro clip i think they call it the backpack clip but this clip is like 23 or 26 bucks and it is so worth the money it has a full range of motion it tilts it rotates uh it clips and, and also on the bottom it has a soft bottom so it uh, won't scratch any surfaces, but it's magnetic. And you will see some clips in some of our videos where the GoPro is actually mounted on the roof of the truck. All I do is open the sunroof and set it up there and it, and it stays. Uh, we just recently did a beach trip. There was a lot of chop and a lot of whoops and uh, washboards and um, this thing uh, stayed put. Uh, it's a pretty strong thing. pretty 
magnet and it has a non-scratch surface on it um i really really like this clip uh but i bought two of them uh just so i could see if the seven dollar one was uh really as good as a 23 dollar one or 26 whatever i paid for it and honestly uh this clip right here is worth the money this clip's fine i don't have any issues with it other than the fact that it won't do everything this one will do um but if you just want to clip it on your hat or if you've got binocular straps or a backpack strap and you want to clip that on there it's fine for that uh but this one is so much better it's so much more versatile and you can do a lot more with it it uh, like again it is the gopro brand clip and i think they call it the backpack clip i'll try to put a link in the description for all of this stuff and i'll put one for both of these so, uh this is our big camera uh it is the sony i think what they people call it the nx80 is the 4k camera yeah they call it the nx cam or next cam and it uh does have a zeiss lens in it uh this camera is phenomenal for filming hunts um i typically uh, use the fourth arrow camera arm with it but uh this camera does not go on the boat at all they're kind of hard to find uh you guys can do your own internet search i'm not going to put a link to where i bought this one from because i had a lot of, of issues with those guys uh, i do love the camera you don't have to have one as expensive as this one to shoot great videos this is what was recommended to me by um another youtube channel and they have uh some really cool videos so uh that's what i went with um something that i have added to this camera is a four hour battery this battery was about a hundred bucks uh but the battery that comes with it um this camera will run it down in about 30 minutes whether you're recording or not uh you might can stretch 40 out of it uh this battery right here uh will allow you to run and record it's not four hours but it's probably three three and a half hours worth of runtime on this battery that is something that if you buy one of these you're definitely going to want to uh upgrade to i will put the model number um and of this camera in the video but i'm not going to put a link because uh really uh, when i was looking for one uh, it was super hard to find and the people that i bought it from were really difficult to deal with it, it was terrible so anyway that's the big camera uh, we don't use it on our fishing videos because i'm just not putting this camera in the river um if i drop a gopro it's two or three hundred bucks if i drop this camera uh it's a big deal so i'm going to use it to record some of this video it's mostly used for our hunting videos and never mind the tripod it's on this is just a cheap tripod i bought from a uh local big box store and it does the job it's not great but um it does do the job when you're turkey hunting again you're going to want to get it insured uh it's a pretty big deal so one of the next things that uh, i wanted to go over as far as equipment that we use is what i wear i bought this boat in 2015 didn't get fish with it a whole lot because i got it in uh i think it was in september late uh end of august early september just took it out a couple of times uh 2016 about halfway through the summer i decided that i really hate wearing sunscreen and i was in a big box store one day and saw this stuff and it's made by bimini bay it's all upf rated it's very light so i decided to buy a couple of pairs of shorts a couple of shirts uh the shorts were like 21 bucks 21 22 bucks a piece the shirts were about 19 20 bucks a piece again all upf rated stuff uh you will see me on occasion wearing more expensive brands and those were gifts i don't pay 80 bucks for a pair of shorts and 65 dollars for a shirt the Bimini Bay stuff, they sell at your big box stores. Uh, you can also go online. I will put a link to that in there. I use it. I wear it fishing. I'm not just out there trying to, you know, look like uh, I'm some kind of big fisherman. I wear it because I hate sunscreen, and it works really well. It's light. It's really cool. On occasion, if I get do get too hot, I'll take these shirts off 15, 20 minutes, put them back on, I've got a top on the boat, so we've got a little shade. I still have the first pair of shorts and the first shirt that I bought in 2016. I have bought more and more of this stuff over the years, and I have yet to throw away a single article of it. There are no rips or snags. There are no tears. Uh, 
no buttons coming off the shorts, no seams unraveling or anything like that. And it's really lightweight stuff. And to be, to be honest with you, when I first started wearing it, it was a little weird because, um, you know, when you're used to wearing uh, cotton stuff, this stuff's a lot lighter and it almost <laughs> felt like you weren't wearing anything at all. I just don't see the point in spending $80 on a pair of shorts and uh, $65 on a shirt when I can buy two pairs of these shorts and two of these shirts for the same price and I'm going to take them fishing and get them messed up anyway. Uh, some of this stuff's got dirt on it that'll never come off. I got a blood stains from fish on it. I, I wear this stuff and I use it and it lasts a long time and it's probably the the very best bang for your buck so this is the very first pair of shorts and shirt that i bought um i have bought more of it over the years because i do really like it and i'm going to roll these out show them to you this is what they look like rolled up uh, if you go for an overnight fishing trip you can put uh, an extra two pairs of these uh shorts and two of these shirts uh in uh a uh, backpack and uh, it doesn't take up much more room than a couple of sandwiches. <clears throat> so these are the shorts and the shirt. And again, I bought these new in 2016. Guys, I, we really just started filming fishing videos last year and we don't film every time we go out. We haven't filmed every time we've been out this summer. Uh, but you know, uh, we have a lot of fishing videos. Uh, we've uh, fished like that since I bought the boat. This stuff's gotten a lot of use. Uh, I don't think I've ever even had to re the button back on here. So uh, you can see uh, they're not threadbare. Uh, all the seams are still good. Uh, you can see that there are uh, some spots on them here and there. Maybe the camera will pick that up. Um, I do wear these fishing. That's why I bought them. They still look good. Uh, a little bit of stuff on the back end. These pants have been fished in hard since 2016, and that's what they look like. Other than a few blood stains and a few little dirt stains that will never come out, um, uh, they look new. So this is the shirt. There are a few stains on this shirt. But again, that's why I bought them. Uh, I'd rather stain up a $20 shirt than I had a, a, a $65, $70 shirt any day of the week. And this stuff works just as good as that stuff. Nothing's peeling or really all that faded on it. If I told you that I bought it yesterday, you probably wouldn't think anything of it. Uh, I wear this stuff because it's very comfortable, it's cool, and it works, and it lasts forever. I really honestly couldn't believe at, at how good it was uh, until I started wearing it fishing. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is my uh, catfishing rods. I do have a couple of cheap ones and I have a couple of pretty nice ones. Um, again, I have purchased these based on uh, experience in the past with them and and what I know works not necessarily based on uh, what everybody tells me and I really like these these rods for what they are the rod in my left hand is an ugly stick Shakespeare ugly stick catfish rod and this is a seven foot rod on um, biometric local big box store and it's very reasonably priced. I've got it set up with an Optic 60 reel and uh, it is strung with 30 pound test. The leader is also 30 pounds, but that's typically what I fish with. I will also carry these to the beach and fish with them uh, because they are cheap. You can bring them home, spray them off, uh, and they last a right good while. If you rust up a reel, you haven't really lost a lot. If you guys want to go out and spend five, six hundred bucks on a rig, that is totally up to you, uh, but this is what I fish with at the beach, and mostly I go after Pompano, and it's fine for that. Now I'm going to talk about my main catfishing rig. These I really love. I also bought this at a big box store, but they don't sell them anymore. I guess they didn't move fast enough for them because of the price point. 
Um, this is a pin rampage rod. It is a five and a half foot rod. I'm sorry, it is a six and a half foot rod. Um, I love to bank fish, and sometimes I may go somewhere and just bank fish, or I, um, when we're at the river, I may sit there and fish off the back of the boat until 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning while Tiff's asleep. And this rod is a stiff rod, and it allows me to set the hook and get the fish off the bottom before uh, he really has the opportunity to take me underneath the log and hang me up. Um, I do have that issue with the lower priced rods. Uh, they're a little bit too long and a little bit too soft. As soon as I set the hook on this thing here, I can start cranking on it and get him up to the top. Now, speaking of cranking on it, this reel is the Pin Fierce 2 reel. This rod and reel is strung with uh, 30 pound uh, Barkley Trilene. That's really all I use on, on most of my rods and reels. I can really uh, hike one up off the bottom of this thing. Even at the big box store, this setup run me about 175 bucks. I have two of them and I love them. And this is definitely one of those things that is worth the money. I know there's a lot of guys out there that are gonna say, well, you know, I've got 10 rods and I've got 400 bucks a piece in them. That's great. If you wanna spend your money on rods, that is totally up to you guys. I'm not knocking you. I tend to spend a little more money on my hunting stuff than I do my fishing stuff. Uh, that's just how I am. I'm way more likely to pay bigger money for a nice gun than I am for a rod and reel. This is still a uh, mid-price range at about 175 bucks. Uh, man, it's worth every penny. Uh, I love these things. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take what I paid for them. They're really good. So, uh, as far as our, as far as what we would call our bait fishing setups, I do have a couple of different types of rods that I use, but what I'm buying now are the Zebco Rhino Tough rods. These rods are really tough. Uh, they're two-piece rods. It's really my biggest complaint about them, but they're very economical. Um, and mounted on this rod is an original uh, Rhino reel. This is one of my biggest complaints with Zebco. The new Rhinos are just garbage. They're all plastic. These have metal gears. I have two or three of these and I clean them up every once in a while, restring them. Uh, they work like new and they are almost 30 years old. When I bought them, I bought them at a big box store and I bought them with a five and a half inch uh, semi-rigid rod that was one piece. Uh, had sort of a pistol grip here. Uh, they don't make those anymore either. I'd really like to see those come back. They were real easy to flick under bushes and stuff in the river. These are, but they're nowhere near as good as the old ones. These are good rods. Uh, they are tough. The reason why this old reel is mounted on this new rod is because uh, the original rod that I purchased with this reel, I just broke last summer. Um, after about 25, 26 years of use. A lot of use. These Zebco Rhino Tough Rods are really good for uh, bass fishing and, and, and brim fishing. I don't like them as good as the old ones, but, but I do really like them. Uh, they're really good. I do wish they would bring back the original Rhino reels. These things were tough and they lasted forever. So uh, this is another uh, Zebco Rhino Tough Rod. What I've done here, uh, I'm trying to find something to sort of replace the old Rhino uh, reels with in, in quality and performance. My brother actually bought a couple of these uh, Zebco Deltas and they are a little more pricey uh, than than what some people pay for this type of reel. I do not like bait casters. I hate them I, and they hate me. So this uh, Zebco Delta here it runs uh, between about 70 and 80 bucks. Um, I have two of them and I'm going to buy more before next summer and uh, set up everything with these. Uh, they are fantastic. They cast like a dream. I'm running uh, eight pound Berkeley Trilene on these things. If you're not real careful, it'll get away from you. Um, and especially in the river, you don't need to cast super far. It flies. 
and I will probably purchase two or three more of these for next summer. Uh, so one of the next things I want to talk about uh, that you absolutely need to shy away from are these extendable transom lights. Now I bought these because my boat has a center console as you guys have seen and technically you're supposed to have your transom light higher than the highest point on your boat. Uh, I bought these at a big box store. They're pretty expensive. Uh, they're about 35 bucks a piece. And uh, I had a friend of mine break this one off for me one night while I was asleep. Uh, he went out to uh, check all of our lines with my boat uh, because it does have a uh, light bar on the front. And he broke this one off for me. I thought, no problem, I'll just go get another one. I'll keep this one for parts. So I went out, bought the same one. This is it. The problem is uh, uh, the bulb, where the bulb seats here, it, it kind of wears out somehow or another. It works fine when it's new. It works good for a couple months. I guess the vibration here, uh, the molding on this isn't exactly right. So uh, if the light bulb turns too far one way, uh, it won't make contact with the contacts in here. There's really not a whole lot you can do to fix it. So I kept the old one for parts. Weekend snuck up on me one weekend and I thought, you know, I can't uh, go fishing without a light. So I went and bought another one, this one. As it turns out, uh, this one had the same issue that the other two had. Well, the first one was broken. The molding in here isn't just right and uh, the bulb rotates too far, comes off the contacts, it won't burn. So I thought, well, I'm gonna take it apart. Well, they have this whole thing kind of staked together and this wiring is wired together. Because uh, it's a uh, coiled wire, um, it's pulled out and uh, soldered together in an assembly and then the heads are put on and it's staked, the ends are put on and they're staked. So to get it apart, you really have to tear it up. Uh, there's really no good way to get it apart. And you can't really get a heating iron down in there to uh, melt the solder on this without tearing the head off of it and then what's the point. Here's $100 worth of junk. Do not buy these. So <clears throat> I do want to just briefly touch on uh, what you see us fishing with mostly. For the rivers we fish, what we have found that mostly works in early spring and through late spring is this orangish sort of translucent, I guess you'd call it chartreuse body on a beetle spin. And, and this little orange one with the black stripes, they seem to work pretty well in the summer. And for whatever reason, they kind of lose a fancy for them uh, as the summer drags on. When the days get a little hotter in, in uh, uh, late May and early June, they seem to prefer white with a red dot. And some of these are eighth ounce, some are sixteenth ounce. But this white with red dot, this is the cricket here. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, this is uh, my main go-to rig. It is uh, eighth ounce uh, white with red dot beetle spin and big brim and bluegills uh, really, really love this thing. Um, I've also caught some three or four pound bass on it. So around uh, July 1st or so, uh, I typically switch to this uh, black with green or yellow stripes. For whatever reason, uh, it just as the seasons progress, uh, they seem to like different colors a little better. Um, this one has a gold spinner on it and uh, that seems to help a lot too. Um, and typically, uh, I'll go back and forth between this and the white with red dot for uh, the remainder of the summer, but as the summer gets longer, it, they seem to, to like this black with uh, yellow or green stripes a lot better, and this one's been crushed by a few fish, as you can see. That's pretty much what I use. Tiff typically uh, likes to fish with crickets or worms, and if we're uh, going to do an overnight and we're fishing for bait, and I'm just not getting any hits on a beetle spin, I will uh, switch over and help her catch bait. This is basically what we use from early spring through summer. In springtime, I uh, catch uh, quite a few crappie on this. I do not have a crappie fishing video yet uh, because 
Um, the last time I went and, and caught a good mess of crappies, I was not filming at that time. I'm looking forward to trying to uh, get at least one good crappy video here this fall or next spring. But these two really right here are my go-tos um, in either uh, 1 8 or uh, 1 16th ounce heads. So uh, this is something that uh, you guys may or may not have noticed on the videos. I have an uh, ATV uh, gun rack uh, mounted on this bar on the center console. <clears throat> I typically don't take my shotgun with me unless we're going to do an overnight. But I used to lay it right here. And it's not good for it when the water gets rough. So I put this ATV mount on here. And I'm not even sure who makes it. any ATV uh, gun mount. But this style will work. Um, I set my shotgun in here and strap it down and it doesn't move. My uh, shotgun has a rubber butt pad on it too. So it really works out great for it. I leave it here. Of course, I don't, I don't have a round in the chamber when I'm riding up down the river. But um, it's here. It's easily accessible. And if we're going to stay overnight, it goes everywhere with me. And then uh, when we go to bed, it goes in the tent with me. Most of the time, if we go down river... Uh, we're more than 20, 25 miles from the nearest house. There's just not a lot of houses on uh, Black River in particular. Uh, that's one reason we go down there. Not a lot of boat traffic usually. So this is a good idea. There's no 911 down there and it, it's just uh, one of those things better to have and not need than to need it and not have it. So, so uh, one of the other things I wanted to point out to you guys uh, here real quick is our cooler igloo uh stx super tough um i've had this cooler for uh probably four or five years now it is a 100 or 120 quart cooler you can step on this cooler sometimes on the videos you'll see us stepping on it and coming across it um i have had uh no complaints with this cooler whatsoever um i had one of the expensive brands and everybody knows what i'm talking about uh, a 60 quart and by the time we put all of our snacks and food and drinks in there for an overnight um, there just wasn't enough room to have enough ice in it for it to really hold any ice um, it just wouldn't keep ice because uh, by the time you got it all packed you could only get about a bag bag and a half of ice in it this thing right here you can put everything in it um, including a 40 pound flathead or and you can put six, eight bags of ice on top of it and it'll keep ice for three days because you can put so much in here and it weighs about empty. It weighs about a third of what the uh, expensive 60 quart quarter weighs. Um, I know everybody thinks they're cool. They just really uh, not practical for, for uh, what we like to do. This thing keeps ice so much longer than the other one, mostly because you can put a lot more ice in it. I really like this thing. It was about 175 bucks and well worth the money. Um, it has been on many, many, many fishing trips. So the next piece of equipment I'm going to talk about on the boat is this uh, Minn Kota trolling motor. Um, I had a regular handle steer uh, Minn Kota saltwater trolling motor on this boat when I bought it in 2016. I replaced it with uh, the Minn Kota Riptide Copilot remote. I do love this thing. I wish I'd gotten one with a little shorter shaft on it. Most of the time, it, it isn't a problem. Um, it's tough. I've replaced the pin in it uh, once. Uh, it comes with this uh, weedless wedge two prop. It's a real trooper. Uh, it does a good job at uh, cutting through stuff. Uh, again, I've only replaced the pin in it once. Minn Kota does not make a slide out adapter plate that fits this boat. So uh, being a machinist and an engineer, made my own uh, designed this thing up did most of most of the work on uh, manual knee mill uh, I would have done it all on manual knee mill but when you're cutting t-slots you need a lot of big flood coolant you really want to get those chips out of there so you don't recut them our knee mill at work at the time did not have uh, flood coolant on it so I did have to finish it up a little bit on the CNC and then And then I uh, put a really nice finish on the outside and sent it off and had it hard coat anodized. Um, this allows me 
to slide this trolling motor all the way out to deploy and all the way back in so that the skeg doesn't stick out past the front of the boat. Even if you get the Minn Kota mount that uh, fits your boat, uh, this motor will be sitting this far off the front of your boat and that doesn't work good if you're uh, fishing at night and bumping into trees and stuff like that. Uh, it can damage it. Price on this one when I bought it in 2016 was about 1100 bucks and I didn't want to have it off the front of my boat so that I could bump into stuff with it. I'd rather the front of the boat take a little bump this trolling motor mount allows me to to slide it all the way back so that um everything's tucked in one of my biggest complaints with this trolling motor is that you have to have a line of sight with the remote other than that i i don't really have a complaint with the trolling motor itself um it is a 55 pound thrust because i'm running a 12 volt system uh, this thing is plenty strong enough for this boat. This boat's uh, 1756. So if you've got somebody on the front and you turn this trolling motor off and it's wide open and, and you forget and you turn it you turn it on and uh, it's it's pointed left or right, um, it can it'll throw people in the water. Um, it, it's it's plenty enough for this boat uh, even in a strong current. You do have to have a line of sight from the remote to this trolling motor would be really my only complaint with it. Um, so every once in a while uh, on the videos, you might hear me uh, tell somebody, hey, uh, lean one way or the other so I can see the motor. As far as the remote goes, um, that is my other complaint. Not, It's not due to any fault of the trolling motor itself, but the remote that comes with these trolling motors takes a CR2032 battery, and those batteries are like around $1.50, $1.75 a piece now. Uh, even with this trolling motor being stored unplugged uh, if you leave the battery in that remote for about three days it will kill that battery completely and every time you go fishing you have to change the battery out so uh, you'll see in some of the videos tiff's putting a battery in the remote uh, because every time we take the boat out of the water we take that battery out of the remote and we can get four or five fishing trips uh trolling around all day out of a battery but if you leave a brand new battery in that remote even with this trolling motor unplugged not pulling any current or any signal to the remote whatsoever it will kill that cr2032 battery in about three days uh like i said they're they're pretty expensive for for that little tiny battery that's really uh, my only beef with the remote uh that doesn't again doesn't really have anything to do with the trolling motor itself <clears throat> this thing's been on this boat since 2016 and has been used a lot it's tough it's lasted a long time and it it's worth what you pay for it. it really is so one thing I really do want to hit on here is this Robo cup if you don't have one of these on your boat you really need one uh, the bottom screws out of it uh, so you can use it as a rod holder it has these straps on it so you can kind of adjust the tension it hangs on really tight and uh, I'm actually thinking about getting another one for the other side. And to be honest with you, my background's in plastics and engineering, and I'm really upset with myself that I didn't think about this before these guys did. And this is a fantastic product. It's not terribly expensive. I don't know exactly what they cost now. I want to say they're in the range of 25, 30 bucks. Uh, they are well worth the money. And you can put this thing anywhere. You just squeeze it together and clamp it wherever you want it it's really easy to adjust and 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 just put anywhere you want it once you have one uh, uh you probably uh won't believe that you ever live without it i, I mean that thing's that thing's awesome so, um i'm going to talk a little bit about uh my fish finder here i had a hummingbird uh, helix 5 on this boat but it did not have gps so i come across uh the helix 7 on sale one day and it was actually about 30 percent off so i bought it and uh upgraded to the helix 7 i'm fighting with the sun here a little bit at this angle but it is a seven and a half inch screen it, it's plenty big enough for this boat fits nicely on on my console anyway and allows me to have uh other little gadgets up here uh, like this ram mount in some of the videos you'll probably see my phone 
uh, in this mount uh, if you don't have one of these on the boat it is an absolute necessity cell phones slide off and fall on the floor thinking about adding one next year uh, for Tiff's phone that thing is uh, I want to say it was about 45 50 bucks and it is worth every single penny uh, back to the helix 7 I love this thing this is the down imaging model it has maps and GPS and uh, one night plug to my uh, front light stripped out and I literally followed this uh, GPS back to the boat ramp not that I didn't know where I was but again out there there, there are very few houses and uh, it's pitch black no moon and we followed that uh, GPS at about three miles an hour all the way back to the boat ramp so I do have an issue with these side imaging and down imaging uh, helix models um, as you can see this transducer is huge and if you're not very careful every time you back up you're gonna crush this thing inevitably the stump you hit is on the other side of the boat it's dead center aimed at this thing so uh, what I've done here and you might have seen in uh, one of our uh, latest fishing videos I have replaced the toothed washers that hold this thing in position with two stainless steel washers and this allows this thing to flip up I'm not gonna flip it up but it, it holds its position still pretty well and in one of my last videos I hit another log and I crushed this part of the mount uh, the transducer itself folded up exactly like I planned for it to. Um, if you use the toothed washers that come with this transducer to hold it in position, uh, it will not let it fold up. And when you hit something, it actually destroys the transducer um, cause it, it, it's, it's mounted rigid, it, it can't go anywhere. Um, I put these uh, stainless steel washers in it and tighten it down just enough that it would maintain its position. And now when it uh, hits something, it does fold up I had another one in the cabinet at home. Uh, I keep a uh, backup of this as well as pieces for the bimini top. Uh, I keep a little supply of those at home. It, they will break and uh, I don't have to sit there and wait a week or two for parts to come in. I can just uh, fix it as soon as I get home and I'm ready to go again the next day if we want to go fishing. So uh, the next piece of equipment I want to talk about, you guys haven't seen it a lot in action. I did have one video this year uh, where Tiff and I were fishing with dad and we had to use the light. Tiff and I did an overnight uh, catfishing trip where we had to use it a little bit. But uh, again, I don't use the big camera on the boat. So uh, the GoPros, which are typically mounted right there on the windshield, just underneath that uh, speaker, are not really good at picking up video in the dark so they really don't do this light bar justice this is an ox beam 42 inch light bar i paid uh 96 bucks plus shipping and handling for it this particular model is the spot flood so uh if you notice if you can see it in the camera here so throughout the middle of this light are the spot lenses for the leds and on both edges of this light there are six rows of flood lenses so what this does it gives you a, a whole lot of light in the middle and on the edges it spreads the light out so that uh, you can see the entire width of the river at night for about 250 300 yards with this light it is super bright i did have to uh design and uh, make a mounting system for it at work it has wing nuts so that this part can slide out I can then tilt the light down to flounder gig with it. And just about the year after, I got this light mounted this way so that I could use it in this position at the river or slid out and pointed down for flounder gigging. They uh, restricted flounder gigging to two weeks out of the year. As of this year, they've restricted the bag limit to one flounder per person. For us to go flounder gigging at the beach in the sound, we're about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes from from anywhere uh, you can go to do that so uh, it for two weeks out of the year now uh, you get to go and get one flounder it just isn't worth it um, but it is set up so it can slide out and tilt down I can tell you right now you will absolutely love it um, I also bought an 8 inch one for my four-wheeler 
Again, I designed and made a bracket at work to uh, mount it to the four-wheeler. If you can figure out a way to mount this to your boat, or if you want to take a look at, at how I've got it here, have a solid block here, and it is drilled with uh, number 10 or quarter inch, I, I forget which, uh, self-tapping stainless steel screws here to the boat because there's no way to get under this to, to put a nut on the back of a bolt. And then um, these brackets here are uh, 10 gauge stainless steel sheet metal. And I've got wing nuts here where you can just quickly uh, loosen this thing up, slide it in and out. There are a hundred different ways to mount this thing to your boat, but uh, if you don't have one, I would highly recommend this. It is well worth the roughly hundred bucks it cost to uh, uh, to get it here. And uh, the only issue I've ever had with it is this uh, clear cover on the front of it uh, was not Lexing. Uh, I don't know what it was, but it was a cheaper plastic. We bumped into a tree that was leaning out over the river like this. Uh, we were in a curve, the current was going pretty hard and we hit that tree and it was just the right angle. It didn't hit the front of the boat. It, it hit the light and it busted this lens. So uh, what I did was I had a guy cut out a piece of uh, eight inch Lexan to put in here and I haven't had any trouble with it since. Again, the GoPros really don't do it justice when we're running a GoPro at night and running this light. I, I do have a switch on the dash so when a boat is coming towards me on the river, I can turn this thing off un until they pass because uh, it is just blindingly bright. I do still keep a spotlight on the boat just in case. We haven't really used a spotlight to catfish with in years uh, because this thing is so bright. When you pull up to a limb line, uh, it just lights the whole bank and everything up. If you don't have one on your boat, I would highly recommend this thing. Uh, you cannot beat it for the buck. Uh, there are plenty of other brands out there on the market. Um, I just happened to uh, look them up on the internet, come up with aux beam, and uh, I ordered an eight inch one uh, for the front of the four-wheeler and I ordered this 42 inch one for the boat so uh, the next thing I wanted to show you guys on this boat that, that I've added are these uh, rod saver rod holders these things work okay um, I'm not super crazy about them <clears throat> they do you know keep the rods out of the floor uh, they hold them very well until you get to the river uh, you get on the river you get a little bit of choppy water and try to get a rod out and and the handles and have slipped out of uh, their holding spot and the, you uh, unstrap the velcro there and all the rods fall on the floor and you've got a miss um, I don't really have a solution for it right now they work pretty good um, if I was going to give them a rating from 1 to 10 I'd, I'd, I'd probably give them a 6 or 7 uh, they could definitely be a lot better uh, I'm fairly happy with them. Uh, they they do keep your stuff neat and organized. I don't know. I, they, I feel like they, that there's some improvement there that that to be made. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys is this bimini top that we have on here. When you order a bimini top, uh, you can order it and install it yourself on your boat. Uh, you do need to give them the height from the floor of the boat. Uh, to the bimini top as to how high you want it. Um, I probably should have uh, gotten mine uh, about four inches taller It does rub my head just a little bit sometimes You also need to give them the width of your boat from mounting point to mounting point So that uh, they can get the width right. Uh, I assume that the reason why is that they're making them custom to order But I love this thing and this thing is tough it gets snagged in branches. We go in really tight spots with this boat. I haven't had any trouble with it really, except for the plastic bracketry that comes with it. So I'm gonna show you here what I'm talking about. All of these pieces, uh, the end pieces, uh, even this big piece here, and uh, these end pieces. Uh, as you can see, I haven't replaced these, but the end pieces down here on the main tube I have replaced. Uh, as well as these uh, pieces that actually mount it to the boat. I forget what they're called. I'll try to put a link in the description for these as well, places you can find them. This swivel mounting point here is pretty hard to find. And I just recently ordered a couple of them. All of these pieces you're gonna want to keep on hand 
so uh, if you break one it doesn't ruin a day of fishing as a matter of fact you would be pretty well advised to to uh, keep all three of these pieces in your tackle I'm at in your uh, spare wet, uh, dry box on your boat at least one backup of each of these three pieces right here I haven't had any trouble with uh, bending or breaking any of the aluminum tubing this thing really has held up well and we drag it through bushes and tree limbs all the time so this bimini top <clears throat> is a sunbrella bimini top made by carver industries uh the next little doodad we're going to talk about here i had added to the boat in 2016 as well are these walking lights there are there are three of them around my console and they're not led and it's a soft white light but uh man it does really light up the floorboard of this boat um as you can tell this boat has a big open floor in it uh these walking lights are plenty of light to be able to walk around this boat at night and see what you're doing so another thing that uh we need to talk about here are boat seats and this is something that i'm really adamant about i fished for uh i didn't i didn't take dad's boat out every weekend during the summer like like tiff and i take this one out but i did fish with dad's boat a few times a summer before i bought this one you know he's he's like a lot of people uh really uh he likes a 40 50 dollar boat seat they bend um and when you lean back in them and they get bent out of shape and the seats tear and they're they're just not they're just not high quality seats uh when i bought this boat the guy asked me well you know uh we need to look at seats uh what kind of seats do you want for this boat and how many do you want i said well i want four seats and i want the most expensive seats you have on the shelf he walked me down the aisle here to uh these seats and these are Tempris made in USA boat seats. Now, uh, you can go buy a $40 boat seat if you want to, but uh, if you buy a set of these boat seats right here, you will thank yourself for it. Uh, these boat seats, again, I bought with the boat new in 2015. They're seven years old. They've got a little bit of sun fading on the back. They do have a latch here that holds them closed uh, you'll see in some of the videos uh, even people that have been on the boat a lot uh, they have a little trouble finding this button here yeah I couldn't believe how deep that hole was behind the boat ramp the other day it's crazy can you see if we both sit up here yeah there's a little button on the corner button here to raise the seat up and uh it whips some of them sometimes but you press this button in see if i can hold the camera at the same time and this seat pops up you'll see in some of the videos my kids sitting in these seats and they like to lean back in them and uh my kids are six one and six three and uh they're both over 235 pounds they have not damaged these seats leaning back in them out every once in a while in a video uh, you'll hear me uh, tell one of the boys, hey, uh, lean up in that seat before you break it. They're stretched out in this uh, seat like it's a Lazy Boy recliner, and, and they haven't broken them yet. They are super comfortable and super durable. They're a little sun faded on the back. I do keep the boat covered in the yard, but this is mostly just from sun exposure on the river. Uh, that's how much uh, we have fished with this boat since 2015 and especially since uh tiff and i met in 2017 uh this boat's been on the river two or three weekends of every month from like i said basically uh april 1st to october 1st <clears throat> they do have them in different colors and patterns um i picked the mossy oak shadow grass i just thought it was really cool and um when i had the top put on i, I picked the same pattern to match it when i bought these seats i don't know what they run now uh, when i bought these seats uh they were about 145 bucks a piece so uh for four of them it's about 600 bucks but uh, i promise you if you put these on your boat uh you will never regret having them on your boat and they last a long time 
So the next thing, uh, I guess finally, that uh, we're going to talk about is uh, the actual boat itself. This is a 2015 all-weld uh, 1756 marsh boat with a flat bottom. Uh, I went with the flat bottom boat because uh, it has way more room in the front than the semi v hole. Um, this boat still rides very well on the water. If it gets super choppy, it's a little rough, but other than that, I don't have any issues with it. Uh, you'd have to slow down for the turn a little and kind of let it sit in the water and then uh, you can speed up a little bit and go on and, and it'll turn great. It's 17 foot long, 56 inch wide across the back and uh, it is equipped with a Yamaha four stroke 60 horsepower engine. So I'm gonna do a little walk around around the boat and show you guys some of the things I like about it and some of the things I don't. So really and truly I do like this boat. Again, I went with the flat bottom boat because it just has so much more room in the front and I bought this boat new in 2015 uh, it has taken a real licking. Um, it's all 11 gauge or what they say on their website, uh, 0.125 gauge. It's eighth inch thick aluminum. It comes, and it really needs a bath, but it comes with this uh, sort of anti-skid coating on it. It is almost like a, sort of like a rhino liner. This finish has really lasted very well um when it's clean it looks brand new um there are only a few places where it's even scratched up a little bit and those are underneath the cooler up there uh there are a few light scratches uh, where the cooler has moved a little bit over the years but this stuff has held up really well uh when this boat's clean um it, it looks as good as new there are just a few areas where it's missing a little bit of paint otherwise uh this boat has held up really well um again it is the all weld flat bottom marsh boat 1756 with the center console i was going to get a side console they didn't have a 17 foot side console when i bought it um and i got up on a uh, center console boat um it wasn't quite as wide as this one but i thought you know it's got enough room to walk around the center console so this is what they actually had on order from all weld so i just decided to go with it and i'm glad i did uh I like the center console so much better. Um, I can stand up and see where I'm going. And if I'm in a part of the river that's shallow or a little sketchy, <clears throat> I can stand and drive. Um, you got all the controls here you need. You've got uh, the lighting. That's a three-way switch. You got bilge, uh, accessories, uh, 12 volt outlets here. I had a 12 volt outlet added to this boat uh, so I could run two spotlights. I rarely use it anymore. Um, when I carry it for the yearly maintenance here in a little while, I'm probably gonna have them swap out that 12 volt outlet over there for a USB outlet. Uh, this center console just is really so much more comfortable than a side console. You're not sitting down on the river um, and it makes it a lot easier to see obstacles uh, in the river coming up on, in front of you. Uh, sometimes I still don't see them. It eliminates 98% of strikes in the river. When I bought this boat, uh, I could have uh, ordered one with a live well in front of the console, but they, that's not what they had on order. They had this boat just like this on order uh, with no live well. Uh, they offered to add a live well to it. Um, I did not want the live well because I have a brim bucket. Uh, when I'm catching brim to use for catfish bait, um, I can move that bucket anywhere in the boat. It's not in my way. If it is in my way, I'll move it somewhere where it's not. It's, it's just that simple and um, I don't do bass tournaments and stuff like that, so I don't really need a big live well. We catch a lot of catfish. We keep very few. Uh, even when both the boys were staying at our house, we only kept maybe uh, uh, three or four a year. We only kept them if they were in the 25 to 35 pound range. Um, all the rest of them we let go, so we don't really need a live well. I opted to leave it out so I would have more room in the bottom of this boat. Uh, it does have a floor in it, and there is flotation underneath the floor as well as uh, both ends of the boat all the wiring from the back of this boat uh, runs through this channel and up to the controls on the console um, one thing that I really really don't like about this boat is filling it up this boat would be awesome if it had a side mounted uh, gas tank over uh, side mounted gas cap over here where you could just pull up to the gas pump, pop the cap, fill it up. I have to uh, raise this back hatch to fill
fill this boat up and get in there. I've got a nine gallon tank with the top down as it normally is. It, it's, it, it's a real job to, to put gas in it. It's not the cheapest boat to buy, but honestly, uh, they're very affordable. Um, with the financing they have now, um, man, they uh, they required 10% down, and, and this whole boat set up with 60 horsepower Yamaha. The payments were about 175 bucks a month, and I know uh, a lot of you guys and gals watching these videos spend more than that on your cell phone service every month. It, I mean, it's not a $100,000 bass boat, uh, but it's not a... You know, it's not a $500 regular John boat either, but um, it's uh, they're super affordable. Um, it's a really nice boat, and for less than what you probably pay on your cable bill every month, you get a lot of boat for that money. And speaking of the motor here, uh, this thing's been a real trooper. Uh, again, I'm carrying it for yearly maintenance uh, here in the next couple of weeks. The, really, the first issue I've ever had with it has uh, recently popped up. I've got a little leak here around this... Uh, right here where the lower unit actually bolts to the upper part it's got a very slow leak right there and that's really the only issue i've ever had with this engine um, a lot of people don't like four strokes some of the old school guys uh, they'd rather they'd rather stick with their two stroke and i'm gonna be perfectly honest with you i love a two stroke too but um this thing right here is smooth as butter and it is so much better on gas consumption than a two-stroke you wouldn't believe it uh, where we typically go uh, we'll put in and we'll go about 24 miles down river fish all day fish all night uh, come back and uh, that nine gallon tank still has about two and a half gallons in it um, before i bought this boat i would take my dad's uh 16 foot john boat with the yamaha 52 stroke on it and to do the same trip he had a nine gallon tank on his boat as well and to do the same trip, I would have to carry an extra seven gallons of gas with me. This boat will do that trip and back and still have two and a half gallons of gas in the tank almost every time. If you're thinking about buying a boat uh, and you know, you're thinking, well, uh, geez, you know, uh, these dealers, they only sell four strokes now. Don't be scared of it. Um, you, you will not regret it. Uh, it's super smooth, super responsive and so much better on fuel than a two-stroke and so much quieter. To be honest with you, when you crank this engine, if you're sitting on the front of the boat, uh, you can't even hear it running. And if you're going down the river full throttle, this boat, uh, this motor will push this boat, not with this prop, but with a brand new prop on it, uh, it'll push this boat uh, with just me and Tiff and our fishing stuff, uh, no camping gear or anything. It'll push this boat about 36 miles an hour if you're sitting on the front of the boat uh going that fast uh all you can hear is the wind noise you can't hear the engine running in the back it's it's pretty darn quiet this thing has been fished and fished and fished i do uh carry it to the dealer for uh uh yearly maintenance every year this year uh like i said we've got a little issue here to fix with a small uh oil leak in the lower unit we just started filming fishing videos last year and we did something like 21 videos I think including this one this year, we're only going to have about 13. We don't film all of our fishing trips, but we do film most of them. We just started filming last year, and I've had this boat since 2015. I did get it late in the season, right before deer season, so I only took it out a few times in 2015. From summer or spring of 2016 on, this thing goes to the river uh, two or three weekends out of every month between March and around the 1st of October. It has had a lot of hours on it. To be honest with you, uh, we have, I have had one incident where uh, me and some friends uh, went to the river for the weekend. The part of the river we were fishing was way down river, very remote, and it's very tidal. So uh, when the tide goes out at the beach, you're still about a good hour and a half wide open boat ride from the beach. But when the tide goes out at the beach a couple hours later, uh, in that part of the river, uh, the river drops about three and a half, four feet. My friends all like to drive this boat i don't really care uh, they all have boats and um if they want to drive i let them drive but the engine was left down uh overnight the tide went out the lower unit was sunk in in the silt and when the tide came back in the water filled this boat up uh, i do have a picture of it if i can find it uh, i'll put it on the screen now but um we took it home took plugs out uh sprayed a little wd in the cylinders 
turned it over, sprayed all the water, uh, all the water blew out of it, and uh, put the plugs and wires back in it. Um, I carried it to the dealership. It was time for its annual maintenance anyway. Um, they changed the oil in it in the upper and lower unit. Uh, they ran it for a little while, changed oil again, drained that, uh, and then they put fresh oil in it. Uh, it was good to go. And that was in fall of 2016. And really, I mean, I haven't had a minute's worth of trouble with it. Now, I did sink it in fresh water, but knock on wood, this thing has been absolutely solid. Um, as far as props go, uh, I'm not real picky about it. I try to run the uh, diameter and pitch that is stock on this motor because I've tried a few different ones and that seems to be really the best combination for it. This is my upriver prop. Looks really chewed up. That's because it is. Um, there's some really nice notches cut out of it here. I typically run this prop if Tiff and I are going upriver because it, it's so shallow and in, in places it's only 18 to 24 inches deep. This is actually my backup prop. I did buy a new one this year uh, when we were in Indiana. We were planning on going down river that day. There was a storm further down river towards the coast, so we decided to go up river, and I forgot to swap my props out. Sure enough, first outing, or actually it was about the third outing um, with my brand new prop, I hit something really good with it and bent it up really, really well. Didn't knock any pieces out of it or crack it, but um, it was bent up pretty bad and had a lot of vibration in it, so. I'm going to try to do a video of me repairing that prop this winter um, again it's deer season now i'm not going to mess with it but um that is going to be a wintertime project um after deer season uh see if i can massage that prop back into its proper form the new prop i would uh, would push this boat about 35 36 miles an hour and this prop right here pushes it about 33 so not a big uh drop in speed i've just been running this prop and i'm going to run it until um, it gets to the point where it just won't get up over 30, <laughs> basically. That's pretty much the engine. Uh, it looks kind of big on the uh, on the GoPro here, but uh, trust me, it's not. And uh, it really pushes this boat plenty fast enough. So I'll just give you a quick view of the boat. I'll just walk around it a little bit here. and The last thing I'm gonna hit on is this aluminum trailer. It was a $250 upgrade when I bought the boat. It is a Load Right Elite. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I sort of have a love-hate relationship with this trailer. Um, it's not really manufactured, it is just assembled from pretty much parts that you can go to the hardware store and buy. It does have an aluminum I-beam. It is, everything is just clamped to this I-beam. As you can see here, the I-beam's actually bent where I've tightened this clamp down so tight trying to get this guide to tighten up. Um, I'm gonna have to address that uh, this winter as a winter project. Uh, it is a lot lighter than a steel trailer. It's just, I don't know, I like it and I don't like it. Um, that's my honest opinion on it. I mean, it does a pretty good job. One of the issues I have with it are uh, these leaf springs somehow or another got knocked a little bit out of alignment and the tire on this side on the driver's side uh, Gets eat out pretty bad over the course of the summer Especially if you drag it on a long trip. Uh, I what I need to do uh, another a winter project is to back this boat off at the boat ramp and uh, Take some measurements on on this axle and see if I can uh, Straighten it up a little bit kind of get it to uh, pull straight this tire does eat out some too pretty much the, the opposite of the other one. So I think there's a little something going on with the axle alignment. Um, again, you can see right here where I've tightened this clamp down so tight that it's actually bent the uh, aluminum I-beam. Uh, again, I, I, I have sort of a love-hate relationship with this with this trailer. It, I like it, but it, it, could, it could be better.
So, um, I know I'm kind of half in the sun and half out over here, but the last thing I want to talk to you guys about was uh, a buddy of mine, Craig Parrish, who passed away in March. So Craig was the first person that ever went out on this boat with me, uh, the first time I ever took it out when it was new. Um, he was a really good friend of mine, and he was literally the kind of person that would give you the shirt off of his back. Um, and he literally did give someone the shirt off his back one time. Um, he would do anything in the world to help his friends, and uh, he was one of the best people I ever knew. Um, Craig had uh, diabetes, and he had suffered a series of strokes over the last 10 or 15 years. And a couple years back, uh, he had a really bad one, and it took him a long time to recover from it. Uh, he missed a couple of summers of fishing um, and through some extensive physical therapy and a lot of just stubbornness um, he managed to make a uh, not complete but a 90% comeback so the last couple of years uh, Craig couldn't go out on the boat uh, it was just not possible the last time I saw him was New Year's Eve they uh, came over to our house uh, we cooked oysters and uh, he was uh, fixing his own plate. And, uh, he didn't need a walker or anything to walk. He, he really, really uh, come a long way. And I talked to him again uh, in March or late February. It's about three weeks before he passed away, and uh, he really sounded like he was almost 100%. Uh, he was really excited about getting to go fishing again. Uh, he hadn't been in probably two summers uh, because of his this stroke. He was really looking forward to uh, getting out in the boat. Um, he was excited about it. Uh, we talked about how much fishing we were going to do this summer. We were both really looking forward to it. And uh, unfortunately, uh, three weeks after that conversation, uh, Craig had another massive stroke in the same part of his brain and he passed away. Craig uh, not only was the first person on this boat, uh, for the first two or three years I had it, he, he was on it the most. We went fishing and did a lot of overnights, went cat fishing on a pretty regular basis. Now, uh, and ever since he had the stroke and wasn't able to go, and and then since he passed away, uh, every time I've been on this boat, uh, Craig's been with me. Um, so I'm gonna do a little picture montage right here at the end of the video, and uh, Tiff and I just wanna dedicate this entire summer of fishing to uh, the memory of Craig Parrish, one of the best people I've ever known.
Ja. Alright, he's up now. Yeah, you need to. Oh, he's not that big. 